Hello everyone, welcome to this next question on classical mechanics. This question appeared in June 2011 and it consists of three marks. The question says, which of the following is correct? It is given that the first option, a free particle in R cube can have infinite degrees of freedom. So let us look at this case. We have a 3D space R cube. So this is our R cube and we have a particle over here. Now this particle can move either in this direction or in this direction or is or in this direction independently. Right? Say this is x, this is y and this is z. So now if a particle tends to move in some random direction, this one, then it would definitely be some function of either x or y or z. So in that case also you can specify the motion of this particle in terms of these three coordinates only. So these are the three independent coordinates which are required to specify the mo motion of this single particle. Therefore, a free particle in R cube can have three degrees of freedom which is a finite number. Therefore, this option is incorrect. Now talking about the second option, they are saying number of degree of freedom of n particles is greater than 3n. So let us discuss this case. We assume that the uh, n particle, the system of n particles is represented in this uh, three dimensional space x, y and z. We have n particles over here. These are n particles. So now we have seen in uh, one of the videos uh, which are present in this playlist on classical mechanics, we have seen that we can convert this system into a configuration system in which we have 3n axis. And so you have this x1, x2 and xn, similarly y1, y2 up to y n and you have z1 z2 up to z n so this is the coordinate system and then you can specify n particles into this system as a single particle this is known as the configuration space so uh, the degree of uh, freedom for this particle in three in this configuration space is exactly equal to 3 n because there are n particles and these are specified in these three independent directions therefore the number of degree of freedom is not greater than 3n but it is equal to 3n so this option is also incorrect now coming to option number third we are saying a system of n particles with k constants has 3n plus k degrees of freedom now this is the system of n particles we know if we have a system of three uh, of n particles and uh, so its degree of freedom are 3 is equal to 3n when it is completely free but now they are saying we have k constants or k constraints acting on it so con uh, if our constraint is of this form say ax plus by is equal to 0 and x and y they are the independent uh, coordinates then in that case you can write x as minus b y upon a. So you have just expressed this x in terms of y over here. Therefore, now your two independent uh, coordinates, they have reduced to only one independent coordinate. So similarly, if you have k such conditions, we had one condition. So a number reduces from two to one. 2 minus 1 is 1. So here in this case we would have 3n minus k degree of freedom if we have k constraints acting on the system of n particles. So therefore this, this option is also incorrect. Talking about the fourth option, a system consisting of three point masses. So we have one point, one mass over here, second mass over here, third mass over here and they are connected by three rigid massless rods. So this particle is connected by this through a rod, this through a rod and this through a rod. So now they are saying it has six degrees of freedom. Now can you see this particle it can uh, either move in this direction or in this direction because they are connected and it can also move in this direction because in total we have we are talking about three dimensional space. So for this particle we have 
one direction as this one, one direction as this one, and one direction as this one. For this particle, we have one direction as this one, one direction as this one, and one direction as this one. So in total, we have, uh, and for this particle, we have this direction, this direction, and this direction. Therefore, in total, how many degrees of freedom do we need to specify this system completely when these three points they are joined together with each other? So can you see this is one direction, this is second direction, this is third direction, this is fourth direction, this is fifth direction and this is the sixth direction. So overall six degrees of freedom are required to specify a system of three point masses which are connected by three rigid massless rods. So option D is the correct option. I guess this question is uh, understood by you. Well, thank you for watching the video.